Hello, my name is Tom Stiles, and this is Tom's Rail Room Show number 331. This morning I was um, trying to listen to shortwave. I thought conditions might be okay this morning, and I couldn't pick up anything. I was really struggling, didn't understand quite why, because I went to my webpage. This is my webpage that I've updated, and now I'm doing updates all the time and adding new posts. But over here, I've added these two indexes. And the first one here, which is the HF propagation index, shows the solar flux is now above 100, which is good. The A index is still pretty high. And the, a, and the K index is very good. Now, my other index, for some reason, is not updating. It's still showing June 8th. I don't know why. That's not updating, but we can just click on it, and then we can go to the source, and then we can see the really updated, and it shows that the HF conditions now, and of course it's later than when I tried a couple hours ago, it's uh, fair to good, fair, and then poor. So, you know, I might be able to receive things now that I couldn't receive before. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've got my radio on. Let me just turn it up for a second. No, it, and plus now it's gotten later in the morning. So I was trying to get China Radio just to listen to China Radio. And I th usually can get it first thing in the morning, you know, at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. But couldn't get it then, still can't get it now. So what the heck, I thought, well, yeah, there's another alternative when conditions are not good in your particular area, which is the case for me right now, is to listen to radios that are on the Internet, where people have hooked up their radios and allowed users to control their radios and listen to whatever program they want to listen to on their radio from their location. So one of those locations is Web SDR. <clears throat> now, there's some advantages and disadvantages of this one as to compared to, for instance, Global Tuners. Global tuners, most of the radios there, you, they're wideband and you can tune almost any frequency on either HF or VHF or in some cases, some radios have both capabilities. So you're not limited. This particular website is based on SDR radios or software-defined radios, which typically um, the ones that are easily accessible via the Internet have limited bands that they can tune. So most of these stations um, will only give you access to the amateur radio bands, you know, 80 meters, 40 meters, 20 meters, so on. But there is one, the I'll call it the main one, which allows you to tune from 0 to 29 megahertz. So it includes the full HF band. Now, <clears throat> right now, there are currently there are 76 servers active. I assume that means there's 76 radios that you can tune. Plus, unlike global tuners, these radios are tuned using uh, JavaScripts, and somehow that allows multiple users to use the radio on different frequencies. So, for instance, this one, it's the most popular one, has 201 users. That means there's 201 people using that radio and tuning different frequencies. So that's the advantage of that. The disadvantage is you have to run Java on your PC in order to tune these radios. So that's the way it works. <clears throat> so I'm going to pick this first one here because it gives me the full spectrum of HF. Uh, Select the address, you know, take me to that website. <clears throat> Here's the information. I guess this is the SDR radio they're using. Here is the JavaScript interface. And let me turn the volume down so that you can still hear my credit voice. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I will try to tune. China Radio and see if they're still receiving it. This is in this radio is in the Netherlands, so they should still be receiving it. 
and we'll turn the volume up and see if uh oh, looked like they went off the air let me uh <laughs> I've done this video about four times this morning and over a course of two hours oh, things have changed naturally <clears throat> so uh, you can control the bandwidth of the radio and uh, you can control the bandwidth of this view the default is showing from 0 to 30 megahertz and we can zoom in let's zoom in so we can look at some of these signals and there's definitely something, uh, let's just pick one here that might be of interest. Let's go down to, th or up to 13800. Try that. Yeah, there's something there. And then you can use uh, you can use these pluses and minus to s change the frequency. So we can slide up uh, slow or fast. And here's the marker right here. It tells you what frequency you're on. So let's do a big jump here. Now I'm not hearing the radio right now, so let me turn my speaker up. Yeah, it's a bunch of noise. Let's go down here to uh, see about 36, about where I wanted to go before. 700, let's start at 700. When you know it, when you're trying to do a show that things change on you. Oh, there's some. That sounds like China Radio that I was trying to get before. Maybe I didn't have it tuned in right. Okay, I'm getting a tone there for some reason. And there's nothing at 13650. Oh, there it is. There it is. Let's make sure we're in AM. There we go. I was in the wrong mode. I don't know what the default was. But there's China Radio. And unfortunately, it's not in English right now. Let me turn this volume down so you can hear my crummy voice. Okay, now you can hear my crummy voice. So anyway, um, I had it in the wrong mode. I don't know what it defaults, but I did not have it in the AM mode, and that's why I couldn't get China Radio before. So anyway, these are all the features that you can control on this radio, and here it shows you an S meter. Uh, this is the volume control I've been playing on. You can do an audio recording. I haven't ever tried that yet, and then you can even do a signal strength plot. Just go turn that on. And then we'll slide down a little bit. Now it's plotting, <coughs> excuse me, the signal strength. And then uh, here's station information. You can look up databases. Here's mine that I, my, I say mine. Here's the one I use a lot, which is short dash wave. And then if you register, you can do a report of a station you received. And that report gets posted to DXCC. And then you can also uh, view the last 20 lines of your logbook or your entire logbook of things that you sorted. So you can, this is, you can make a log of things that you've listened to use, using this website. So here's the SWR being plotted. And I did fast, so it's changing quite a bit. And as I showed you before, you can change the waterfall view, zoom in and out, change the speed, size. Let's just try size. Let's make it a large. There we go. There's a longer waterfall. 
And of course, the advantage of using a waterfall, you can see where the stations are and pick out uh, to the uh, to this particular station. So I just wanted to show you this website. This particular one is, oh, that's kind of cool. I don't know if these are, hmm. When I zoomed out more, I got all these little pieces of information about uh, stations. Huh, that's kind of interesting. Let's see, does China Radio, sh oops. Hmm. I'll have to, oh, there's China Radio right there, kind of buried in there. Let's see if I can zoom in. Any, whoops, there we go. Now I can read them. Back up a little bit. I think these are uh, from some of the databases. So that's kind of cool. Oh, I could I can slide over. It's not changing their frequency. It's just changing what I'm looking. There's China Radio International, and there it now has selected it. And here again is the little bandwidth thing that shows you what the radio is tuned to. That's pretty cool. So I invite you to uh, try out this website. The, uh, let me go back to the original website. It has a listing. This is the listing of all the radios that are available. And this is on websdr.org. That's the website. And here's all the radios that are available, which changes from time to time as people take their videos online, take them offline. And then down at the bottom here, you can see there's a bunch of, yeah, so 76. Here's a map showing you where the radios are. And you can zoom in. And let me slide down a little further so I can get a bigger picture. And here is, whoops. And you can slide the map over. And so I can zoom in on North America and these are there's are about what half a dozen stations here that um, people have taken their radios and put it on this website and for instance here's uh, one I'm down in Florida so the closest radio is number 66 which is a 10 meter beacon receiver in Louisiana and then here's one over in Texas which is a two meter radio. It's one up in New York. Has several bands. Again, they're mostly HF bands. Uh, this even has uh, six meters. So, anyway, that's the website. Kind of a cool website. And each one of these um, stations or websites or radios is slightly different. Like, for instance, if we just choose another one here. You'll see that here's the website, and then here's their interface. This particular one I picked has this additional, huh, additional chart. And I think this is, it says this web SDR is currently being used by 16 users simultaneously. So I guess this is the user's ID where they have one. And what frequency they're listening to. That's pretty cool too. So again, uh, take a look at this website. Again, here's a little notification. You have to, it wants to use a JavaScript. And for each website, you can either say run this one time or always run this so it keeps track of it so this doesn't pop up every time you go. But each it said, let me go back <clears throat> one more time. Okay, I'm getting that message that it wants to. Okay, it's, wow, well, geez, I went back too far. <clears throat> it says, um, since Java versions applets need to be enabled for each site separately, you have to turn it on for each site. That's why I was getting that message for the new site I tried. And then once you said, okay, it's okay to use Java for this website, then you won't get that pop-up anymore, theoretically. So anyway, that's the show. If you enjoyed this show, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.